another famous TikTok doctor, loses their license to practice medicine. This time it's in the state of Ohio with Dr. Catherine Grohr, also known as Dr. Roxy. Dr. Roxy completed a plastic surgery residency, was fully board certified, and in fact opened her own surgical pavilion and recovery house. Now, that surgical pavilion and recovery house is part of the problem as to why she ultimately lost her license. Dr. Roxy was doing very well until she discovered TikTok. When she discovered TikTok, she thought she could expand upon her practice by doing this ridiculous looking dance. She did this dance in the OR, in the hallways. A few show her doing it on the operating table. A few show her actually doing it during an actual surgery, which is a great way to break sterile field. You see, in an operating room, there are areas that are sterile, and I'm going to discuss that later on as well. A lot of people saw these TikTok videos and truly enjoyed them. They went to her for surgery as well because they thought she came off as a very down-to-earth, fun-loving surgeon, not thinking that they're really having surgery and this should really be a serious matter. However, the State Medical Board of Ohio felt differently. They felt that these TikTok videos were a potential breach in patient confidentiality and in 2018 served her a notice and said, we recommend you take courses not only on patient confidentiality, but also on ethics. She did take these courses and submitted them. Now, the average prudent doctor, once they got their first reprimand from the state medical board, would become frightened and stop everything. But she didn't. She decided, let's start making live stream videos of actual surgeries, which could be fine if you had full consent. So what happens? Some patients start contacting the state medical board and say, we didn't know we were going to have our surgery broadcast on the internet. Some got complications and said, we didn't realize that this surgery had a potential to have this type of a problem. And some people developed significant complications that were really neglected when they were in that recovery house. Now remember I told you that she made her own surgical pavilion. Now it's not a bad thing to do. A lot of plastic surgeons in fact do have their own surgical pavilion for a few reasons. One, ease of scheduling. Two, you're always working with the same team. And three, you do get a little extra reimbursement being you get a facility fee. But there are negatives. You have to be on the open it up and up for this. Because if you have a complication or you have an infection or something untoward is going on in the OR, such as the surgeon starts gyrating and dancing in the corner, that could go unreported. You see, if that happened in a major hospital, operating room time is precious. It's probably the most expensive area in the hospital. And if you have a surgeon dancing in the corner and it's noted that these patient surgeries are taking longer than expected, you're gonna get complaints from the staff as they wait around waiting for you to finish your dance and it's not going to go over well and you're going to be reprimanded by the hospital administration in a very short time and if it continues you would lose your privileges to do surgery at that hospital but when you have your own center basically it's no holds barred and if you don't say anything nobody knows however some patients did get severe complications which was the beginning of the end for Dr. Roxy. One patient came in for a liposuction. Here we see a liposuction being done. You have a rigid trocar going through the skin and into the fatty layer and actually sucking fat cells out. These patients are anesthetized. It could be general anesthesia or it could be local anesthesia. In any event, you could traumatize deeper tissues and deeper organs if you're not paying attention. And when we look at this video here, she's doing a liposuction. She's first looking forward, now she's looking upwards. Then she's looking at the camera. All this time, moving that trocar in and out of the abdomen. Now, introducing that steel trocar in and out of the fat layer. If you angle it down too much, and you're not looking, you could easily pierce the muscle and actually pierce the bowel. 
One patient had six bowel punctures. Another patient had two bowel punctures. Now you might think, oh, that has to be hard to do. It's not, it's very easy to do. You have an anesthetized patient, the muscles can be flaccid. They're certainly not gonna be as toned as they would be if the person didn't have any sedation on board and you could easily pierce through them and damage internal organs. That was really the beginning of the end because now the state had these videos as evidence. You see, you just don't lose your medical license, one, two, three. There's usually a series of steps. She went through this for five years and things got worse and worse and worse. She had a patient get septic. Now, any surgeon could have a patient get an infection. However, when this patient was in the recovery house, she did complain that something seemed wrong and they didn't want to take her to the emergency room. Probably because that would let information get out to the community that something happened in the surgery pavilion and it wouldn't be good for the practice. Well, that person wound up being septic and spent a lot of time in the intensive care unit and almost died. The Ohio State Department of Medicine had three major concerns in the end. First, they still were concerned about patient confidentiality. Second, they were concerned that there may have been a lack of informed consent, both for the procedure and for the videotaping of their live surgeries. When you get a consent, it informs you to a great degree about the procedure you're about to have. It should tell you what the procedure is, what it entails, what's the recovery going to be like, what are the potential complications, what other procedures are out there that might give you similar results. You can expand upon that and find out who can we speak to? Can we give your information to your husband, to your daughter, to your son? It might also expand out to can we videotape your surgeries? If that's not in the consent, then you do not have that patient's consent to record the surgery, nonetheless put it out to the world. The State Department of Medicine was very concerned about that. Now, with these patients complaining and infections arising, and including abdominal perforations, they were concerned that the cameras running in the operating room were a distraction and taking away from her concentrating on her patient, which is the only thing a surgeon should be concentrating on. Also, the Ohio State Department of Medicine was very concerned that the dancing could lead to inadvertent contamination of instruments as well as infecting the patient. In the operating room, we have sterile fields and we have sterile personnel and non-sterile personnel. The sterile personnel are wearing the gowns and the gloves. They're also only sterile on the front of the gown down to where your elbows turn from the chest up. So there are areas that are not sterile, your head, your back, and anything above your elbow on the upper arm. The sterile person cannot touch those areas. The tray holding the surgical instruments is only sterile on the top. So if you're dancing and you manage to put your arms down, you've now broken the sterile field. Should you go up and touch the instruments, you then can contaminate those instruments. They were concerned about that. All of those five years of concerns added up to one major devastating decision. And we could see by the judge, he was very upset. In poor judgment and delegating our responsibilities to others appears to have significantly contributed to her falling below the standards of care. In deeming her an eminent danger to patient safety and public health stripping her of her license permanently. So how could you avoid this happening to yourself? Well, part of the problem is social media today and also some of the reality television shows. The Swan, for instance, would take an average looking person and do five or six surgeries on them, major surgeries, and create this beautiful looking person. And it always seems so easy and so safe. But like I always say, in medical spas, medical seems to be the least important word. Well, with plastic surgery, surgery seems to be the least important word in some of these cases. It truly is surgery. 
So it's important to, yeah, find a doctor that you relate well to. But you also don't want a doctor who's going to be dancing around in the OR and not thinking about you. You want them to be concentrating on you, the patient, the entire surgery. And believe me, plastic surgery is surgery with potentially fatal complications. I'm Dr. Messina, and if you do like my videos, remember, give me a thumbs up, click subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next educational video.